Hey, this is Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com. And I want to do a quick lesson using Toon Boom Studio 8. And I want to show something uh, about using bones. Now, typically, whenever I use bones, um, and I don't do it that often, uh, typically I will just have one solid drawing on a single layer. And I will go to my bone tool here. And I'm going to simply click and drag the upper arm, click and drag again. This is going to be the lower arm. And last but not least, click and drag all the way out to the end of the hand there. And at that point, I can come in and start manipulating each section here. Now, that's just with a single layer, and that's uh, pretty much the way that I'd always done it. But uh, recently working with a client, uh, shout out to Jock Church, uh, we came into the thing of, well, what if we want to use uh, separate layers? So we have this first arm down here, but the second arm, uh, I've taken the same drawing and cut this up. And if we look at it, we have the hand, we have the lower arm, and we have the upper arm. Now, if we take a look at this, uh, the way that I've drawn this, um, we look at the forearm, we see I have like these dark lines on either side. And this is kind of to hide exactly where my lines and fills are. And if you look at the hand, I've drawn like little gaps here so the black line isn't there. So the first thing I want to do uh, is make sure that the hand is in front of the wrist so that becomes invisible. So I want to select the hand here. I'm going to hold down my Option key, Alt on PC, and press the down arrow on my keyboard. Okay, and now we have that covered up. Now, I don't really have to do that with the lower and upper arm. That's already working. Okay, so we have that set. And the next thing I want to do is go ahead and set up a hierarchy. So uh, the upper arm is going to be the parent and the children are going to be the lower arm and the hand. So the way I'll do that, is simply select the lower arm and move that right under. And of course, I did a weird jump. So I'm going to adjust this here. And then I'm going to select the hand. And move that under as well. All right, so we now have this set up. So if I decide to rotate the arm that's there, but I can also select just the forearm and rotate that way. And I can still come in and select the hand. Now, this is typically the way that I work. I, I normally work uh, just off of the using the hierarchy. But I'm going to bring all this down for a moment. And what I can do in addition to this is I have all of the selected, just selecting the upper arm here. I'm going to select the bone tool, click and drag the upper arm, then the forearm. And again, then the hand. So what I should have is now I can still manipulate this the same way as I did with the earlier. Now, of course, we've got some weird distortions here. And we can fix that uh, by going in and working with our bone influence. So I'm going to select this, go over to my properties, and I'm going to scroll down. And where the influence says infinite, I want to turn this to elliptical. And this is showing me exactly what's going to be affected. So I can bring in this other piece here. Spread the hand out a little bit. And still a little bit off. Uh, I'm going to go to one other area. 
and I'm going to manipulate exactly where the bone starts. It's going to bring that out a bit. Okay, so that works a lot better. So there we have two different ways that we can use the bones. And just to finish this up, I'll go ahead and select. Let's go ahead and collapse these. I'll select, let's go out to about frame 30. Let's do Command Shift 1 to extend the exposure. And put in a keyframe on both of these. I'm just simply pressing the letter I. And let's say by the end, we'll have them doing a different type of movement. Maybe he'll be pointing down. And maybe this one will be pointing up or outward a little bit. All right, and one last thing that's, uh, if you're still using like that, pretty much working with it as if it was like working with the transform, but I do want to show the natural movement inverse, and that's basically if I move the upper arm, it'll bend the arm that way. And if I do the natural movement forward, it's going to bend the arm the other way. And I would use these as a starting point and then come in and manipulate this a little bit more to get it exactly where you'd like it to be. So I hope this has been helpful and showing you a few things in Toon Boom Studio 8. If you'd like even more information, please check out my tutorials I did for infinite skills for both Toon Boom Studio 7 as well as Toon Boom Studio 8, where we cover things like lip sync, uh, learning how to use the different effects, as well as some character design. So this has been Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com. Remember, keep it simple. Make it perfect. If you don't have time to make it perfect, Rethink the idea. Have a good one.